So we lived in it for a bit, fixed it up, flipped it and made some money. And that was kind of like the first real money I had really tasted. I grew up with not a lot, you know, working class neighborhood. My folks were, you know, hard workers, not like we were like dirt poor or anything, but everything was like budgeted. And I just came from that kind of mentality and like you work and you go to a job and you get paid and that was it. And so that was like, kind of like the first time that I had actually thought, oh, wow, I could get like a whole chunk of money at once. And so we got into it and we just moved and kept, kept flipping. Welcome to The Real Freedom Show, where we inspire you to pursue your passion to gain time and financial freedom through opportunities in real estate. I'm your host, Mike Swenson. Let's get some real freedom together. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Real Freedom, where we talk about different ways that people build time and financial freedom through different opportunities in real estate. I'm your host, Mike Swenson. If you want to get started on your real estate investing journey, check out our website, freedomthroughrealestate.com. That's freedomthroughrealestate.com. We've got articles, videos, tips, all that to help you figure out how you want to build time and financial freedom through real estate. So today we've got an awesome episode for you. I'm so excited to be able to share with you. We've got Matthew Gibbs. Matt is a business innovator, seasoned professional in real estate and mortgage industry, focusing on making homeownership accessible for all people. And you built a great Canadian mortgage company with a mission to simplify and expedite the mortgage process, ensuring clients have access to the best financing options available. You understand challenges faced by first-time homebuyers which is a big issue right now, talking about creative financing solutions and leveraging AI technology to streamline the mortgage application process. And then obviously you as a business owner have a lot to share too on entrepreneurship and mindset and whatnot. So a lot of stuff for us to dig into. So Matthew, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, why don't you just start by sharing a little bit about your background and, and kind of how you got into the industry and we'll take it from there. How far back are we going? <laughs> As far back as you want to go. Well, yeah. Okay. I got, I first got interested in into real estate in my twenties, mm -hmm. uh, probably like I would say about 25 years old. Um, I met my wife, my current wife while I was, when I was 23 and she came with two kids. She, she had had young and then we had another kid. So by 25, I had three kids. So I kind of, you know, was pushed into the deep end at the time I was working like a crappy construction job, like 10 bucks an hour. Canadian. So like $2 us. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, uh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a good situation and I was looking for something, you know, to better, to better our situation. Yeah. For the family. So I just, um, we decided to get into, we decided we were going to get into real estate in some capacity. Uh, we started out looking for something with income. We actually had, um, a friend. So like one of the girls, uh, friend's mom was like a girl guide leader and she was like big time into into flipping and owning income generating properties and things like that and she had uh several of these like rooming houses i don't know if you guys have that um where mm -hmm. you're at where there's like you know 10 rooms to a house and that kind of a thing where it's for people that are like collecting assistance and you know the rooms rented at that time for like 325 bucks a room or whatever so she owned several of those and she was selling one and we tried to get it, but we just couldn't make it work at the time. It just was just out of reach for us, for what we had for a down payment and that. So we couldn't, and we actually couldn't find anything in the town we were living in or anything that we could afford at all. So we ended up having to move, you know, like an hour and a half outside of town. And we found a little tiny house that needed some work for you know, under a hundred grand again, Canadian. So not much money at all back then. That was like 2001. And yeah, so we lived in it for a bit, fixed it up, flipped it and made some money. And that was kind of like the first real money I had really tasted. I grew up with not a lot, you know, working class neighborhood. My folks were, you know, hard workers. It's not like we were like dirt poor or anything, but everything was like budgeted. And I just came from that kind of mentality and like you work and you go to a job and you get paid and that was it. And so that was like, kind of like the first time that I had actually thought, oh, wow, I could get like a whole chunk of money at once. And so we got into it and we just moved and kept, kept flipping. The market was heading up at that time. And so we'd move into a house, find, like find a house that was like on a decent street and, you know, in a good area, but was kind of falling apart and, but not, 
nothing structural or whatever, you know, just cosmetic stuff that was easy for us. And so we'd fix it up and flip it and move on to the next one. That's kind of how I got into real estate to begin with. Well, and I think what's interesting to hear is, you know, for people that listen to this and they're trying to figure out what to do, there's so many things inside of real estate that you can do. And I think kind of to your point, the key is you just got to start somewhere, right? Like pick a spot. You're going to learn, add knowledge, build connections and relationships on top of that. But if you don't necessarily know where exactly you want to go or what exactly you want to do, just start somewhere. And then that strategy can change over time. And, you know, you you don't have to know everything. But I think the key is, is just get started. And that's what you guys did. Right. And it's not going to be get rich overnight, but it's going to take some time and you're going to slowly grow and add and grow and add and grow and add. And then maybe you switch and and move to a different piece or different area of of real estate within the industry and you continue to grow but you're adding knowledge on top of that and so it's just kind of you just got to get started right exactly absolutely like that's that's the thing and i just hear like a lot of young people now i don't know what it's like where you are but like here um in canada in in general it's it's a lot of gloom and doom a lot of young people are like i'm not even going to bother real estate's too expensive And I know it is a little bit more expensive in general here proportionately versus like wages and all that kind of, and groceries and gas and all that stuff. So it might be like a little bit difficult in some of these markets compared to, to what you guys are dealing with. But like, yeah, young people are just like, I give up, I'm not going to bother. And I think, you know, like what we did, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. Like I said, we couldn't afford anything where we lived. And it's like, no, we're going to move somewhere where we can afford something and deal with it, you know? And just to get started to your point. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the important thing is you have to be flexible, I think. Or find somebody who is in real estate and find a way to create a partnership some way, shape or form, you know, like whether it's somebody, you know, like and trust and and it's easy for people to say, well, I don't know anybody. I don't have anybody. But if you want it, you'll try to start to figure out some ways to make it work. And it might be, you know, a five step process and you're just at step one, but you got to figure out how to go from step one to step two, step two to step three. And even today, you know, I've been in real estate full time for over 10 years and on the investment side for over five years. Well, I mean, I guess I I did have an investment before I got in real estate full time, but I'm still learning. Like, I don't feel like there's still so much to learn so much that I don't know about real estate, but you got to got to find a way to get going. So how then did you dip over into the mortgage side? Okay. Well, uh, that's a bit of a long story, probably too long for this podcast, but generally, so I'd been uh, fast forward a little bit. I got into um, online marketing and, and lead generation and things like that. And so I, I did eventually end up, uh, becoming quite successful in business in general, was able to build a eight figure business. Mm-hmm. And, um, then unfortunately that business, um, came to an end due to some regulatory stuff, things changed in the landscape and that business was done. Um, and so I was looking for something else to do. And, you know, when I was, one of the things that I always found to be a pain in the butt when I was buying places was the mortgage process. Um, In Canada, it's very cumbersome. Uh, The banks, you know, have long wait times. It's, you know, you go to the bank and you're not getting the best rate. They're just going to offer you what they're going to offer you. You go to a mortgage broker. Great. But still same thing. You got to make an appointment. You got to go see them usually. Um, and all that kind of stuff. And it was just really cumbersome. And I thought, why can't this just be done online? You know, you know, a few clicks, like ordering something on Amazon. And so that's what I got the idea. And I reached out to a, an old friend of mine who was actually the mortgage broker that I got my first mortgage from. And he was running his business exactly like that local referrals only. He didn't even have a website. It was completely archaic. And so I said, Hey, listen, I think we could change this around and do this this way. What do you think? And he said, absolutely. And so that was, that was kind of the impetus behind launching great Canadian mortgage co was just making the process super easy and being able to reach uh, people all across the country and allowing people to get a mortgage from the comfort of their own home. Go figure, see a need and meet a need, right? You saw a need out there in the marketplace, something that would genuinely help people and and you're able to do that. So what makes you guys unique? What were maybe some of the key pieces of the company that's been successful in, in maybe differentiating you guys from everybody else out there? So what makes us different is, that, like I said, that you're able to just go online, fill out a form, takes about five minutes, hit submit. And then 
the application goes out to over 200 lenders. Mm -hmm. So nobody else is really doing that. Um, you know, mortgage brokers in general, they, they might have access to like 30, 40 lenders that they, that they have, but we're actually getting the deal out. And so we're, we're going to be able to get a way better rate than, than even your average broker, mm -hmm. because we have access to so many lenders and we have, you know, exclusive relationships where we send a lot of volume to specific lenders. And so we can get, you know, negotiate better rates than you could get even going yourself, maybe even to your own bank. How are you able to create relationships if most of the companies, you know, go to 30 to 40? How are you able to get in front of 200? Uh, it's just that we have access through an exclusive pipeline that we've established. And uh, it's just a lender network that we're working with. It's just the network that we've established. And from a feedback perspective from clients, what do they say in terms of how it's been able to, to kind of change how they operate getting a mortgage? Uh, feedback from clients has been great thus far. People appreciate the fact that they still get personalized service because once your application does go out, we work closely with you, you know, and we will bring the couple of deals that come back that look good, you know, because it's not like you're going to get 200 offers. It goes out to say all these lenders, but you you might get like three or four come back that say, yeah, we'll do this mortgage and we'll, you know, work to get you the best deal from what comes back. So yeah, it's, uh, it's feedback has been great. People just love the process. It's easy, but still personalized. And how do you help people decide who to choose? Because I know, at least in the United States, it's like, you know, some people think, well, I'm just getting the lowest rate and that's it. Well, there's sometimes more to that. The ability to close different lenders, look at income requirements a different way, or they have different regulations that they have to follow. So if they do get, you know, multiple people back, how do you kind of help them decide which one's going to be the best fit? Well, I mean, whatever the, the best fit is for you is, is very very individual, right? So mm -hmm. we just kind of look at the entire situation of the deal, you know, the person's situation, um, you know, things like how long they want to be committed. Like here we have, uh, there, I think you guys do like 30 year mortgages, right? Typically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here. So here it's like five years is kind of the typical, but some people might want to only lock in for like a three year or a one year. Um, and there's could be different reasons for that, but yeah, mm -hmm. we just look at the general situation and we just, yeah. It's not always just about rate. You're right. There's other factors at play for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I always like to share my story of when we bought our first house, no down payment. It was just a townhouse. We were going to stay there for a couple of years. And I remember our lenders like, are you going to stay there for more than five years? And we said, nope. So we're like, okay, great. Got an adjustable rate mortgage, bought it. And then the market tanked and our, our townhouse was worth half of what we bought it for. And it's like, oh, there's more to it than just, oh, not going to live here five years. Okay, great. We'll just get the adjustable rate mortgage. And then everything kind of collapses. And that's really, it's really what forced us into becoming a renter. We ended up turning that property in a rental property and moved on and did some fix and flips as well. But yeah, there's a lot more to it. And and somebody that understands and can really meet your needs and, and help is really important on the mortgage side. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, that's a, that's a situation that a lot of people find themselves in here. And, and I know there too, with rates, what they are. Um, and a lot of renewals, like in Canada, there's a crap ton of renewals coming up now this year into this sort of higher rate environment and people are kind of panicking, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's valuable to be able to work with someone that can help you navigate that and help you get into a situation that is going to be the most helpful and advantageous to you. And I know you had mentioned previously about first time home buyers, you know, being a struggle, not necessarily knowing if they can afford a place of their own. What would you advise, you know, outside of kind of your, your situation was a good example of that kind of moving somewhere where you can afford something, but how else do you work with first time home buyers to kind of help them get a spot if they want a spot? Well, I mean, there's different, there's different things that people can do. Like you mentioned, finding a partner, for example, and I always recommend if possible to get into something with income right away, even if it's your first home. And mm -hmm. you, like, if you can find something that has some income, at least it's always better. So, you know, you might partner with somebody, maybe you're going to get a, a duplex or a triplex or I don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And then also there's, there's options out there. Uh, if you don't have say a down payment or much of a down payment, uh, at least here we have, programs in some areas where there's down payment assistance or, you know, like through the government type programs. And then there's mm -hmm. also, um, you know, you can just outright borrow your down payment. Now, obviously that's not always advisable. Uh, mm -hmm. People can, 
easily get themselves into trouble doing things like that, you know, 100% financing. And obviously you're paying a higher rate on the down payment portion that you're borrowing. But you know what? There's deals out there. And sometimes, you know, there's an opportunity and you want to take advantage of it. Doing something like that is, is can be a good idea as well. Real estate agents, are you tired of letting the busyness of your real estate business get in the way of your real estate investing goals and your financial future? I'm excited to announce that we've created the Real Freedom Investor Agent Tribe to help you. We've got a ton of content, educational tools to help accelerate your learning curve and get you on the right path to hit your investing goals. We also have a mastermind tribe of people just like you, agents that want to grow their own portfolio and encourage you and cheer you on along the way, as well as some private one-on-one coaching. So go to realfreedom.com, click on the store. You'll see the options there. We're so excited to be able to help you. I've priced it super low, so price can't get in the way, but did want to have some skin in the game for you to help with that accountability. So go check it out, realfreedom.com. Click on the store. We're excited to connect with you and excited for you to connect with your tribe of real estate agents, investing, trying to build their financial freedom. So so talk a little bit about growing a business. I'd love to hear kind of your perspective. You know, people listening to this podcast, there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there, whether it's inside of real estate or it's people that are entrepreneurs outside of real estate looking to get into real estate. I know you had mentioned, you know, mindset and and that kind of stuff's really important to you, but I'd love to hear you kind of share more about that side of building and growing a business and facing challenges and and advice that you might have for people. Yeah. I mean, I guess one of the things that, that I've been thinking a lot about lately and in when it comes to building and growing a business, uh, because I just recently, like I said, launched this new business is, is focus and just learning how to shut everything else out and focus on one thing and seeing it through. I think a lot of entrepreneurs, and I've been guilty of this in the past, is have a tendency to like do a, too many things. People hear like, oh, multiple income streams, that means I'm going to start eight things at once. And that's- Jason Shiny Pennies. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's not the way to go. And it's, and we all know people like that. And, you know, I myself, like I said, have done that in the past. I just had to learn to just, to just focus on one thing and just stay at it and be able to see it all the way through. Yeah. And it doesn't always work out sometimes, <laughs> you know, sometimes, um, and you all, you also have to be willing to, to get back on the horse. You know, we've all been through failures and, you know, I've started, attempted to start, you know, several businesses and you know, not all of them work. So mm-hmm. being, being resilient and being able to to not let that beat you up and get you down and getting on to the next thing and focusing on one thing at a time, I would say are my, like my two biggest pieces of advice that I could offer. I always tell people, you know, more, more particularly like real estate agents when they get into real estate, well, why do they want to join real estate? And this is kind of true of, you know, entrepreneurs and the real estate space in general is, you know, people get into real estate because they want unlimited income, complete control of their schedule, and they want to make a hundred grand. And it's like, well, what people typically find is it takes a lot more work to make the amount of money that you want it to make. And it takes longer. And so I tell people like, you've got to stick around long enough to where it finally clicks for you. And, you know, it, it takes some time, you know, I, I compare it to kind of, you know, running into the wind versus running and having the wind at your back, right? When you start something new, you're going to be running into the wind. You're going to have to have people, you know, they, they don't know what you're doing. They don't know what your new venture is. You've got challenges. You're putting things together. You're facing problems all the time. And eventually you get to the point where your systems and your people and your marketing start to come together and and you get some wind at your back. And so it really is a challenge. And I always just advise people to, you know, keep hanging in there. It's never a failure until you quit. And even if you decide to move to a different direction, you're still taking all those lessons and learnings that you had from building a business previously and applying it to your new venture or your new industry, whatever that might be. So there's, there's definitely a lot of challenges and people just have to keep pushing forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything takes, (laughs) I think everything takes 10 times more effort than you think it's going to 10 times more time, Mm -hmm. 10 times more everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, My wife always gets on me when uh, I always tell her like, Oh, I got to quick, go do something. And she's like, it's never quick. (laughs) And even, and then if I give her a time frame of like just something small, like a 15 minute task, a 15 minute task takes a half an hour. Right. And so building a business, right. There's a lot to it. And so what your goal might be for year one, 
Maybe you don't hit that goal. Maybe it takes another year to hit your year one goal. But if you really want to do something that's impactful and your company is definitely something that's changing the way mortgages are done, that's awesome. It takes some time. And so you just got to keep sticking with it. Yeah. And having those goals is really important too. That's the other thing is that um, a lot of people just get into something and they, they don't really have a clear vision that they can break down into steps. Like they just don't have that. Like they might have a general goal, like, yeah, I'm going to start this business or I'm going to, you know, be a super successful realtor or whatever it is, but they don't really have like a target, you know, in mind that they're reaching towards. And that's super important too, mm -hmm. is to have those clear targets laid out. Well, thank you so much, Matthew, for coming on and, and sharing. For people that want to reach out to you, they want to learn more about what you're doing and maybe just ask you questions as a mortgage lender, as a business owner, whatever that might look like, how can they do so? Okay, so as Great Canadian Mortgage Co. is get, G-E-T dot Great Canadian Mortgage dot C-O and Instagram, Great Canadian Mortgage. Mm -hmm. Tick TikTok, the same, Great Canadian Mortgage. That, that'd be about it. And if anybody wants to reach out to me directly, I can be reached at matt at greatcanadianmortgage.co. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing. It's it's cool to hear your story. It's cool to hear how things have changed and, and best of luck as you continue to grow, grow your company. 